Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial. What am I going to be covering today? I'm going to be covering how I take a set of drum stems and turn some of the channels of my choosing into MIDI files. So I have a set of drum stems here from a session I recorded a while ago now uh, of a Bristol band called Sweet Tooth. So I've just got uh, the levels set roughly and I've got some panning going on. And I'll just play you what it sounds like. And the microphone stem I'm going to be making a MIDI file from is this snare top mic. So I'll talk you through some different techniques and then finally uh, how I do it for the most part. Uh, most DAWs have sort of some built-in system for converting audio to MIDI. Logix is uh, if you highlight the track and go to track in the menu and replace or double drum track, you can also press Control and D. That brings up this system, get rid of that window because it's the worst. And then as you can see it's taken this audio and created this MIDI file and this MIDI file reacts in real time to the settings you place onto it. So this threshold is the main one you really want to mess around with. You want to set what instrument it is just so the sample comes back and what it's reading is uh, accurate. Um, so this threshold basically is a threshold that goes over this audio file and any audio peak that goes through the threshold, it will trigger a MIDI sample. So you can see if I bring it up to zero, it'll get rid of them, because apart from that one, because nothing is going above it. And if I bring it all the way down, there's loads, there's way too many, because uh, the bleed itself is triggering. So if you want to do it this way, you've got to sort of set the threshold right and go through and make sure everything that you want to be triggered is being triggered. Another way is by far the most time consuming, but it is also the most accurate way is to literally go in by hand, zoom in on the waveform, enlarge it up, and paste in a note. So to do this, I like to put one in and then cut it. And then I've got it set so that it'll paste at the playhead. So you just go in, find the beginning of that note, paste it, go to the next one. This is the most time consuming and it's just the most accurate way. So it is the best way to do it if you've got the time and patience. But I'm gonna teach you a way that is accurate and allows you to go in and edit at your free will. And it's using a program called Slate Trigger. The way to use Slate Trigger to get MIDI files is to load it up on the channel. And then if I play, let's just use this. And bring the mix down so you can hear the original. You can see this is the threshold that we were referring to earlier, uh, which is in this it's referred to as detail. And as you can see, anything above that like peaks through the threshold has got this orange tick, which means it's going to make a MIDI note for it. Uh, so you can bring the threshold down. There's a section of ghost notes. So if we go here, you can see the threshold is set high, so it's not triggering the ghost notes. So I can bring that down up the sensitivity. But you can see it's not triggering all of them. That's set pretty good. But then if we go into a louder section like here, you can see it's gonna start triggering other things that we don't want it to trigger. So you can see there the, the kick bleed is actually triggering a note. So the way to get around that is to use this suppress feature. It's a little bit more involved, it's a little bit complicated to set up, but it makes it really, really accurate when it comes to getting those trigger points. In a lot of doors, you can just create a stereo track and send, you need to send what you want to trigger to the left hand, to the left stereo channel, and what you want to suppress, so for us it would be the kick channel, to the right hand. Uh, you can't actually do that in Logic, so in Logic you have to set up a stereo bus and put trigger onto that bus. So that's not stereo, now it is. So let's put trigger 2 stereo onto here. So I've got my snare, set the center unity and send it through just the left. So you can see on the input, it's just coming out 
into the left channel. So we're going to send the kick in again at unity and send that all the way to the right. Now, and if I bring the suppress up, you can see that now the kick is coming out as red on this graph here. And that's basically showing you what's being suppressed. So if we take this ghost note uh, region again, bring the detail down sensitivity up because we want to get those ghost notes. You can see that the ghost notes are being triggered, but where the graph is red, it's telling slate trigger to not trigger that. Because the kick is being suppressed. And that's how you get it to trigger properly. So you want to import that MIDI file. So the way to do it is to clear the buffer and you want to make it just play all the way through. This is going to basically log into trigger the MIDI file. It will remember it internally and then you drag it into your DAW. So I'll let it play through and for the sake of brevity, I'll just do this beginning section so I can show you it. So clear buffer and play through. Great, so let's set up a MIDI channel. Oh no, there we go. Bring that up to where we can see it next to the snare top. And then where it says drag on track, you drag it. The MIDI files will tend to start at the bar line before the first trigger point, as you can see there. So now we can reset all of this info. We don't need any of this set up anymore. Get rid of that at once. Okay, cool. So I like to just go in and make sure that these are lined up. You can set it internally in Slate to accommodate for this, but I honestly prefer just to do it manually so I know it's spot on. So now if we take a look, you can see there's our MIDI, which perfectly replicates where the snare top is being hit. And that's how easy it is. It really doesn't take long and it's super worth it. It's just gonna open up loads of possibilities in terms of what you could trigger. You could even tr use this info to like trigger Tom gates uh, on your channels or to trigger room samples on your snare, for example, or just to completely sample or replace a drum of your choosing. Uh, so thanks guys for checking that out. As always, we hope you are well and we will see you next time.